Star Trek 57, M23, take two. Star Trek Podcast. My lord, the ship appears to be deserted. How can that be? They're hiding. Yes, sir. But the bridge seems to be run by computer. It is the only thing speaking. Speaking? Let me hear. Nine, eight, seven, six... Five. Get out! Three. Get out of there! Get out! One. Hello. Hello. Hello, Dan. Hello, Hello. Jesse. Hello. Um, when do I get paid off? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 191. Man. 100, 100 is fine and fun. Uh, 191 of the it's, it's fine got, and fun. Uh, of the It's Got Star Trek podcast. 100 and blinding sun. And uh, this podcast. Incredible machine. <laughs> yes, we'll get to that. This podcast on this episode, we are going to be ha- uh, conducting part two of our discussion, our two-part discussion of Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. If you would like to hear part one, and I highly recommend it. Yeah, if you're going to listen to part two, why wouldn't you, you psycho? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's a little off. <laughs> I mean, they're not necessarily psychopaths. They could have some other mental disorder that yeah. causes them to do this. <laughs> or maybe they're just carefree and and uh, bohemian might be like a emotional problem (laughs) (laughs) yes to your planet welcome that can be too okay so uh that's going to be our plan for the discussion this week your planet welcome uh I do want to briefly note that, yes, we are slowly creeping up on uh, episode 200 of the It's Got Star Trek podcast. And in preparation for that, we are hoping to have listeners uh, send in emails, audio clips, uh, pictures, pictures, whatever whatever you want. Um, uh, You can send things to feedback at itscotstartrek.com if you want to send anything celebratory. If you want to send hateful comments, I don't know, whatever you want to send. So emails, uh, again, uh, whatever, whatever you want to send our way. Because on the 200th episode, we'll we'll put together a fun, fun extravaganza episode where we uh, play a bunch of tapes, have some discussions, uh, look back on our 200 episodes of this now venerable. Now venerable, once plucky, now venerable podcast, the It's Got Star Trek podcast, thoroughly embedded into the Star Trek podcast uh, environment mm. ecosystem. Okay, so yeah. on to the conclusion of our discussion of Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Why did you do that? <laughs> All right, um, let's talk about the Enterprise, because... The Enterprise is it goes without saying is one of the one of the key characters in all of Star Trek, all the, the all the variations of the Enterprise. But this is nominally, mm. in a literary sense, the original. For real, the model may be different, uh, but it is the original. And this ship has been through so many adventures, and to have it come to its end. It's fiery end in this episode, I think. In this movie? Uh, yes, in this movie. You mean this movie? I'm sorry. It's we an got, easy it's an easy error. We got to do more movies on this podcast. I would make this error fewer times if we did more movies on this podcast. Mm-hmm. This is only the second movie we're doing. Mm-hmm. But yes, the Enterprise. Now, there's a there's a few key moments with the Enterprise here that again are sort of core memories. Um, we'll get to the whole blowing up of the Enterprise because that's Cormorants. that's a core memory for Cormorants. all sorts of people. Cormorants, cormorant, um, sugar ants. The scene that all I'm always I always recall uh, is very evocative, or the scene that like holds a, a deep place in my memory 
is when the battle damaged Enterprise is moving from left to right, you know, ho- it is entering space dock, which by the way, this is the introduction of this version of space dock, mm-hmm. right? This is the first time we see this is in mm-hmm. Star Trek three becomes so prominent in TNG and later series. Cause the one we saw in the, the recent episode of TOS that we, we watched, the ships are just fl- kind of flying around in orbit. And there's like in, in the newest Picard, I think they have a brand new one. It's like an upgraded, but version. they still yeah. have, they still new. have the old school looking lights going blink, blink, yeah. blink across the top. Um, when, when they were, when they were approaching space dock, Sulu's all like, um, estimating space dock in 2.1 hours, 2.1 yeah. hours. Who says that? So that's like two hours and six minutes. That's a long time. Who says two hours and six minutes? Maybe he doesn't like the number six scientists. Scientists, those, those old scientists. They're turning it into into, des- into uh, base ten. Well, it's 10. funny too because there's not like there's there's no there's no such thing as metric time. <laughs> Right, exactly. There's no metric time and there's no metric Precisely. temperature. Right, those are two things that there's no. Metric Everyone's always for. like, mm. "Well, Celsius is at zero, but it's no, not. It's not. No, it is not a metric. Nonsense. It is not a metric measurement. Actually, I can't say everyone says that. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm a assuming lot of a lot of people sort that, of assume yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am somebody who is. I'm very Celsius is some whack shit. I'm pro metric. Yeah. I'm, but ex- I'm not a big fan of Celsius. I think Fahrenheit is the better mm-hmm. temperature thing because a Celsius is not based on anything. It's, it's arbitrary. It's not, it's not, again, it's not a metric easily. All it is unit. is zero means freezing, which is a little, makes a little more sense than um, Fahrenheit, but Fahrenheit has more, is more granular. That's the exactly. only thing that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I first heard this argument from Stephen Novella on the uh, mm. skeptics guide to the universe podcast. I think he's made it a few times. I personally find it a very convincing argument. I hear he's from his and it's exactly what you're saying, Dan. Is that Fahrenheit is more granular? It's an even scale. It's it's there's there's more details in there, and the fact that you the boiling point or the freezing point, you don't you you don't need to worry about that most no. of the time, right? Yeah, right. But, it doesn't need to be zero. It's but really, the, yeah. I don't. I, I when I'm traveling around in Europe and it's all like it's 20 C. I was like. Ugh. Yeah, then they're like, right. "Oh, now it's twenty one C." It's like, "No, I want it to be like like now it's thirty twenty point three three C." Yeah. All right. That digression aside, mm-hmm. oh, eleven. Um, I always love the, all the the <clears throat> the Enterprise. You made me think of it, Dan. The Enterprise coming to space dock at that angle. Brilliant shot. Mm-hmm. Brilliant shot. The Enterprise cruising in there with all the with all the wounds I, on the side and everyone's looking at it yeah. including Janice Rand and they're all like oh my god I I, I love I We're love in the bar getting drunk and that ship is all fucked up I love um, when when ships are docked in space, especially like space dock, because it's the space dock station is amazing. When ships are docked in space, it's like, especially in space dock. Yeah, exactly, precisely, because they're giant. You'll, you'll note I didn't make that comment. What right? about? Jesse made that comment. In yes. Docked in space. What about Doctor Space? What about, <laughs> what what about, about Doctor Spazzo? Spazzo? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I am Doctor Spazzo. I am Doctor Spazzo. <laughs> Doctor Spazzo. Everyone, look up Doctor Spazzo. And the best part about telling people to look up Doctor Spazzo is they'll they won't figure out how to spell that. Yeah. And, good luck. Google, and Google won't won't know how to correct it. But that's ChatGTP about about his, his grandfather, Doctor <laughs> Spazzo. <laughs> I am Doctor Spazzo. Uh, all right. Um, all so right. so it's in the, these ships are pretty giant, right? And you've got these. Giant ships, several of them, several of them, several spaced far enough distances apart that it's a lot of distance, and it's big, and they're still surrounded by this giant fucking space dock. Yes, it's this giant building surrounding, like it's l- gorgeous. People do that, and then look at and look at all the, the <laughs> like, like you look at the the the, well, look, the future, all the windows. Baby. There's all these windows. People do things behind. It's a da, that's why they don't invite Jesse over here. <laughs> Because he's going to yeah, defenestrate. Oh, no, he's going to defenestrate. That was, that was from last week's episode. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Mr. Defenestrator. We have a good memory. It's called a callback. It's a call, double, she, double, triple callback. And back. I love the scene. Yeah, the dude, he was all looking out the window and the ship's going by. Like, he's looking. Do you think that they must have people, like, living? Do you think it's just military personnel that lives in nah, space stuff? Or do you think, think they, I they, think it's I big enough to handle a whole civilization? I think it's lower deck style where. I don't like, think they have enough military personnel to fill that. Yeah, lower, that's what I'm saying. On lower decks, and one of the great things about lower decks is the animated form. Format means they have effectively unlimited budget. Oh yeah, they have like building. a whole malls and so shit yeah, like, that. like they yeah. show like all the shops and the street vendors yeah. and, and and the arboretum and all that stuff. Um, now, granted, it's not maybe not always on on this space dock, but that there's that, a couple of food courts. The implication mm-hmm. is that you got this massive At least thing. Three Panda probably Expresses. Three, People yeah. are rocking. There's probably it. five uh, Sparrow. Sparrow. Yeah. yeah. Is Sparrow still a thing in the United States? I don't what know. About Frankenstein. 
Oh, I remember that. I that, was got, a, that was a place you could get a beer and a sausage. Like, I real, always got yeah. the stuffed pizza at Sparrow. I yeah, remember man. That, that was, that, that was yeah. the way to be. I usually got the uh, Stromboli. Now, that was good, too. Stromboli. I could get that, too. Not bad. I worked at the Swatch store at the mall, and Swatch. on break, I would go to the Sparrow Swatch, Swatch, and get a Stromboli. There's some alliteration for you. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's a good of you. <laughs> that's a good of it's me. It's a good of me. <laughs> I like it. How Did you sell seashells by the seashore? How many have paid the price for your impatience? This is also another joke from last week. Speaking of alliteration, yeah, that was a callback. Yeah, well, we do a lot of call. It's part one. People. I mean, it's been a week. It's a week. They might not remember all the all. They the... might have saved up that episode so they could listen to it saved and just, like, up all at once in their episode piggy bank. <laughs> yeah, it's time for not. total truth between. It's like a seamless. It's got Star Trek experience. They saved it up in their targ bank. Their targi bank. They t- saved it up in their targi bank. Toby targ. Targ, the yeah. Targ. Yes, as opposed to a piggy bank. The Klingon equivalent to a piggy bank would be a Targi bank. Tar- a Targi bank. Just, to, just <laughs> audiences like it when you explain the joke. To Maybe them. they have just have like a gawk N- barrel. Gawk barrel. <laughs> but the Targi bank. Bo- bobbing for gawk. The Targ is not to be mistaken with the Duk Tog, which is a weapon that when you press the button, yeah. it goes pa <laughs> The Dick Tog. Yes. How do you pronounce like parentheses instead of vowels? Dick Tog? Dick Tog. Maybe it's a diphthong. It's a Dick Tog. Is it a diphthong? Dick Tog? Dick Tog. Dick Dick? Do you like Dick Dicks? Isn't that like a some kind of bird or something? Mm. No, it's not a bird. A dick Dick. It's a bird. Look it? up Dick Dick. It's a bird. It's not a bird. <laughs> or a lizard or That's something. A it's not a, a lizard. A, a titmouse is a bird. A Dick Dick is not a bird. A Dick Dick is a little deer looking thing. It's like a tiny that's little right. deer looking thing. Yeah, that's thing. what right. I fucking said. It's a little <laughs> deer bird. bird. That's exactly what I said. It's like I a just bird. It was a bird. I just looked it up and it's exactly what I said it's it was. It's a bird that's shaped like a deer. I'm just saying. <laughs> you don't know you aren't. <laughs> okay, Enterprise. We're still talking about the Enterprise. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we see the Enterprise going into space dock. That's an iconic shot. We see the Enterprise floating by all damaged. That's an iconic shot. The next iconic shot is when they fucking steal the Enterprise. Yep. And oh, that yeah. whole stealing the Enterprise. Oh, my gosh. That is like the heist of all heists. This I think that's one of the best things in st- best stealing a thing in Star Trek. Mm. It's so fucking tense. And it's great because it's so slow. It's two big fucking Navy ships like just, <laughs> just lumbering around. You can imagine somebody stealing a fucking aircraft carrier or a frigate or some shit. So, yeah, the, uh, 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 10 minutes of this movie was dedicated to this whole heist. So there was... I, I, I looked at the time markings at 37 minutes to 41 minutes. Break bones out of med bay. I'm calling it med <laughs> break, bay. Break, break bones. Break bones. <laughs> med bay. <laughs> You're going to break my bones. Break bones. I'm going to break bones so hard it's going to get me out of med bay. I'm going to break bones break bo- and chew gum. <laughs> Yeah, break bones. And I'm all out of gum. Yeah, break bones out of break McCoy out of the medical bay um, to the transporter because they're gonna send him to st- the Starfleet Funny Farm mm. from Starfleet Funny Farm. Yeah, where it was something about it. What was he saying? Well, like, he's fucking nuts, dude. Right. Um, now you guys got me all like trying to figure out. Now I'm, I'm getting. Hungry. I thought you were gonna click on a sound. <laughs> I was trying to click on a sound. Chief O'Brien. I was trying to click on a sound and I couldn't do it. <laughs> Balana is not on oh it tonight. Oh my god, Balana's no. not on it. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> we do not have any cat. Balan is on Federation it. Funny Farm. <laughs> it wasn't even worth it anymore. <laughs> it wasn't even worth it anymore. Well, it's another alliteration. Federation Funny Farm. To, to go back oh, to your yeah. point of last week, it's another alliteration. There's a lot of maybe uh, Leonard Nimoy is just into uh, into alliteration. I hear he's fruity as a nutcake. <laughs> there, that's what I was looking for this whole oh, time for Shatner. Who's, yeah, for and Kirk's then the sake. Funny Farm. I hear he's, Fruity as a nutcake. Fruity as a nutcake. Boy, that was a failure. Uh, what did you think about this but whole thing? Oh, wait, wait. The thing oh, is, the there's, scene, there's the fruit oh, wait, wait. cake. Yeah. There's not nut cake. Yeah, fruity is fruity as a you, nut you, cake. You should say nutty as a fruit cake. Yeah, what but I it? think this is an example of Kirk getting a, sl- a phrase wrong. Like he, yeah. like he does more no, of I, no, in, it's cool. in Star Trek I'm just, you know, I'm Fruity just, as a nut I'm cake. I'm just, you know, splitting. I hear he's Chief O'Brien. You know, I hadn't noticed that before you mentioned that, Jesse. The fruity as a nut cake. That's some bizarre ass shit. But it works. It works for uh, oh no, that's Shatner that's not the getting. Thing. Uh, I don't know if he's the only person that said that or not, but but yeah. it, I, that always stood out for me yeah. from the movie. I guess <clears throat> so. That's, that's one thing I remember that I didn't mention in the last episode. So as I was as I fruity, isn't Dan's it? got a, Dan's got the list. We got the list, the list of events before I like yeah. lost myself in in madness. Uh, Thirty. <laughs> 37 minutes to 41. It was they they were breaking McCoy out of the med bay to the transporter with the age 
uh, aid of Uhura, mm -hmm. but to deal with that fucking Mr. Adventure guy. Well, yeah, I had to deal with the biggest piece of shit in fucking Starfleet. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, nobody, like, what was the deal with that guy? Uh, He's like, I know you're on your way out and everything, but. Has that, you know. has that guy been in any other. Yeah, you know, um, I forgot to. I meant to look it up because I was trying I was to figure like, out who he was. He looked. He did look familiar. He looked like Cyclops, the guy who plays Cyclops. Um, but he's not. Yeah. He looked What's like a guy's... proto Cyclops. Hey, he was not. He'd be what older. was that? What was that guy's name? He's been in several things. Yeah, he was in uh, Bling Bling, and he was in that uh, Netflix show. The... Uh -huh. He was in that movie with um, who's that guy on the baking show? Um, who has alopecia? He was in Sonic the Hedgehog. Alopecia, that guy. Oh, Matt Lucas. He's in a movie with Matt Lucas. Actually, really? yeah. Did you know that? I didn't know that. James Marsden. Yes. <laughs> Did you know that, Patrick? Did you just not want to say it? No, I, I also I equally was not remembering it. I know the name James Marsden very well. He was in Dead to Me. He was in Sonic the Hedgehog. He was in X-Men. But uh, I could not remember the name because of my elderly withered brain. What was the name of that Lucas character? Matt Lucas. Matt, Matt Lucas. Lucas. Matt Lucas. So I'm going to like IMDB Matt Lucas here real quick because that's something we should take time to be doing. <laughs> Uh, but that guy, that what I, I, lieutenant or ensign, whatever the hell his name was, uh, was a total piece of shit. He was really obnoxious. I commend... Small Apartments. They were in a movie together called Small Apartments. Okay, great. Yeah, <laughs> they were in really? an obscure-ass movie together. Yeah. 2012. Um, uh, Uhura, not punching the fuck out of this guy demonstrates her professionalism. Mm -hmm. I, what, if you I, lost all your sense of reality? Yeah. It's like, what? That was, a, that was kind of a dumb line, too. It, it was, was like, a oh, dumb line. Hey, look at the, it sort of didn't make... It sort of didn't make sense. Hey, that's, yeah. that's Admiral Kirk. Oh, my God. But this is damn irregular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like that they point out that, yes, there should be orders. There should be... All, all sorts of things should be happening in a very standard, not even military organization. Just... Any organization that has any sort of procedures or, 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 or standard operating procedures, anything like that, um, you would expect to have something along those lines for security purposes. But uh, Very good for you, Lieutenant. Yeah. She was talking down to him. She knew what was the deal. And well, so yeah. I, I mean, obviously, part of what kept her from punching the guy probably was mm -hmm. that she knew she, she was about to shove him into a closet. Yeah. And, and he just all he all he was doing was making her enjoy that part of the plan more than she maybe initially would have. Yeah. Like if he was a really nice person, if it was a nice ensign there who was all polite and friendly, and then you a yeah, horror I'm sure would have felt bad yeah. about well, he was basically him like into a closet. He, he was board. like, I don't know how you don't go crazy in this piece of shit that you have life you have to live on this shitty shit <laughs> know, shit. Right? And you're getting old too, man. Mm. I know you don't care anymore about life because you're old, you know. It was just like Jesus, man. What an idiot. What an idiot. What an idiot. So that was 37 to 41. Then from 41 to 45. Are you, are these are time codes in the yeah. movie? So that was five minutes. Yeah, 37. They're not just random numbers? They're not. They, but they and you're not picking them because they're prime numbers? No, they're, none of them are. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> That's just a coincidence. I, <laughs> except for 45, yeah. For new listeners, Dan loves prime numbers. And not in a bad for way. Two. Not in a weird way. No, it's just Perfectly it's just turned way. into like it's it's it, a, a preoccupation to an obsession to I'm in love with them. Like I'm not suggesting this you're is how in love is. with them. I don't think there's a romantic attachment, but I do think okay. that there's a a foundational sort of a fundamental funda fundamental, fundamental a fundamental appreciation the for the awkwardness the fundamental breakfast maybe you identify mm. with a prime number because <laughs> Where does a prime number fit in? A prime number is necessary, but it doesn't. You know, everyone's looking at it like you just, you just got that extra one. You're doing out. your, you just got that extra one hanging. You're out. doing your Jeff Goldblum Bloom impression at first. <laughs> was I Goldblum? No, it was not on purpose because I do not actually have a good <laughs> Jeff Goldblum yeah, impression. That was I can't pretty do, good. I can't do it. You can go like, uh, <laughs> I can do some of the, 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 the man mannerisms. It's but. like I can only do the Donald Duck voice if it's just like. <laughs> but I can't like say anything, you know. Yeah. I think everyone can do that. Everyone can, if they try, can go like. I'm not good at that. <laughs> I, no, no, I, don't, I don't quite got it. Jesse, why don't you give it a shot, Babo? <laughs> okay, you don't have to. Okay, so Jesse's very I, stingy. I can't do Daniel, Donald Duck. It's fine. Jesse's very stingy I, with I his characters. I work with a guy now. that can do Donald Duck. His characters, Jesse's oh, yeah? characters, pop out from from time he to does time. A lot of, he does a lot more Kermit though. Mm -hmm. Kermit I am the Kermit, frog. I'm Kermit the Frog. I used to be able to do Kermit better. Can't do Kermit so well these days. Mm, that's too bad. Yeah. So uh, five minutes of the movie, 37, 8, 9, 4, 4, five minutes of the movie is sent getting Bones out of jail. Then from 41 minutes to 45 minutes. Have we concluded the getting Bones out of jail, though? Because there's the whole tiny bit with Sulu. 
Is that? Or oh is that, yeah, did yeah. That's that's included in that where Sulu flips that guy. Yeah, which yeah. was an awesome flip. It was an awesome. It was flip. really believable. And, and Sulu was like, "Don't fucking don't call me fucking tiny." Yeah, because <laughs> that guy was that big a guy being a dick. That guy was being a dick too. He was just like all of a sudden out of nowhere. I'm gonna start being a dick to this this little guy. He's like, I'm just gonna stand up. Yeah, he was doing. He was the funny again. Fun you better I, watch. I, it. I mentioned this in part one, but it could be that my often potentially unfair. Uh, distaste for security personnel uh, comes at least in part from mm. from this mm. from this movie, as well as real life, <laughs> as well as all so my experiences in real fucking cops, life. Yeah. So, getting through this, uh, and actually, it is around thirty-seven minutes of forty-one. I didn't round off but a second or two, so okay, it just okay. worked out that right. way. Well, from shit. Forty-one right. to forty-five. Right. It takes four minutes for the Enterprise to back out of the space garage. Yes. So that was pretty awesome. I love that. Uh, those that. Was awesome one of my favorite parts and again i remember this so distinctly as a kid when kirk's like he's like scotty okay go mm -hmm. scotty's like mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like still moving and then kirk's like what's going on he's like no i'm working on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i just love that because you're so used to it just all all the plans working in in perfect unison and here there's they add these little bits of levity which are important since the movie is such a fucking heavy movie mm -hmm. overall and then, uh, so 45, 46, about a minute for them to clear space dock after backing out and then go to warp. And then 46 minutes to 47 Whoa. minutes and 20 seconds, they zip away to the Genesis planet and this whole situation. Genesis! Here, fucks up the Excelsior. Yeah. <laughs> Scotty, as good as your word. Aye, sir. The more they overthink the plumbing... The easier it is to stop up the drain. Here, doctor, souvenirs from one surgeon to another. I took them out of her main trans warp computer drive. <laughs> Sabotage. Sabotage. Okay, a couple things on this this scene with uh, Scotty. First of all, it works great in the context of the movie. It's wonderful. It's hilarious. They've assigned Scotty to help with the uh, uh, final preparations to test out the Excelsior and its new transwarp drive. First time mm. we're hearing this whole transwarp term that comes up mm. a lot later in Star Trek. So all of that's great. It's really funny. It's a good payoff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I agree with the philosophy that uh, Scotty's espousing <laughs> that that just because something's you know you know more newer that it's easier to fuck up. I think yeah, that's true. Sometimes I don't think it's like always true. Sometimes newer things have better error correction and better security procedures and other things like that. Uh, the other comment I would make is and and you you can even I don't know if you want to play that clip again or not, but. Uh, it sounds to me like James Doohan is maybe, maybe had a little bit of, a mm. little bit of the old uh, mm. Scotch whiskey, the the non synthahol Scotch whiskey well, before filming this scene. <laughs> I'll jump. I'll jump to the four to the part in question. Scotty, as good as your word. Aye, right, sir. The more they overthink the plumbing. The easier it is to stop yeah, yeah, yeah. up the drain. <laughs> Here, doctor. And this is not... Souvenirs from one surgeon to another. Maybe they did, it after, they did the scene after lunch. Computer yeah. drive. Uh, this is not, it's not to dis disperse, uh, besmirch uh, no, James Doohan or Scotty. <laughs> it's just there's a little bit of the old... I'm just, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's and frankly it's in character. So maybe I mean, he does. It's not like that's his normal voice. So yeah, you know. that too. His normal voice is it's the wine voice. No, it's a Canadian voice. It's a Canadian voice. He's saying things like process uh, and project. Um. Well, Scotty was was um skeptical of this whole Excelsior business from the start. There was this. There was this. She's supposed to have transwarp drive. Which is awesome. And, and Sulu, Sulu of course, and Sulu, Sulu captains the Excelsior later. Yeah, and so yeah, so he, and he's so the he's Excelsior has it. that guy from RoboCop. Excelsior. And then he's all like, and if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a wagon. Like the whole time, he's like got some shit against the Excelsior, and I don't quite know why he's so against it. I guess to him, transwarp drive is just a like is 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 the same thing as it would be kind of like the Excelsior is to the Enterprise, maybe what electric cars are to um, like a, an, a an older. Yeah, like mechanical car. The like, Excelsior is the new thing if, if, in Star Trek, and and he's used to the Enterprise being the top shit. 
Well, I was so I was thinking it was like you got a mechanic that works on like a, 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 a your classic like mechanical car from the nineties, and then you have like, like a Mopar, and then let's Mopar say Mopar Dodge. Then let's let's say you have a, like an electric car or a hybrid or whatever, and and so it's the difference between that. Like the old ones, the mechanics can work on more easily. The new ones, it's more like it's not as fun because you got to like program a computer. You yeah. can't replace the parts as easily. So maybe it's like the Excelsior is like becoming too computery or something. I, I, the, the, the way but you're I, what you're saying, Jesse, that you thought it was just like he was feeling jealous of it yeah i i think he's feeling jealous of it as part of it you could argue in some ways it's out of character for scotty because scotty was always reading the latest uh engineering manuals think, like yeah. on vacation he was always looking into the newest oh, stuff that's right and so in, it's in not the future, like he wasn't into new stuff and in the future engineers are like computer programmers and like yeah. me- mechanical and electrical engine they're everything all at once but yeah. i think what where we can make a little bit of sense of this is to add the context of being the early 1980s and specifically mm. using the car example, because I think the car example is a good one, Dan. You have people now buying these imported cars and smaller cars and people really are like, yeah, these cars are not as good. Mm. They are not built to last like right. an old whatever. Uh, whether that was true or not, I don't know, but that certainly I, I was the perception at the time. So it sort of fits into that context because nowadays it's like, yeah, you buy an electric car. It's like, oh yeah, that car is like way better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's way better. It's simpler. It's a simpler car. It has fewer parts. It's less complicated. Um, but anyway, uh, so it's funny to see Scotty do that. They made they started making cars like too well or something like nowadays because the, the reason the used market I'm getting talk about used car the used car market I'm sorry that was my fault I took that analogy a little too far I took it yeah you brought it to the next step and I was like yeah let's keep going with the car analogy but let's just talk about used cars well, and their gonna, prices we'll have a separate podcast where we can talk about sort of like uh, poli- you know policies and you know sort of manufacturing and how that impacts. Uh, uh, social social so stuff. You were speaking about the whole thing with with Uhura, and she doesn't go with them on their mission. Yeah. She just meets up with them later, just to be mm-hmm. in time for the next movie. Because yeah. they did not want to pay Nichelle Nichols. No, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's awesome. part of this. I was looking She's for in the next movie though. I was looking for some um some right? like Uhura quotes, and there wasn't that many to to grab. She's she in four. The uh, she is in four. Yeah, yeah she okay. does a lot. I thought in she four. was in. Yeah, yeah she I does a lot so. in four because they're yeah. all like they're they all back her. in time. Where yeah. He, clearly here they said, okay, Ahura is going to Vulcan to set everything up. Okay. Because she tries to talk to the probe. You, right? you could have sent an email, you know, mm-hmm. it's all good. Uh, I think they just didn't want to pay her the money. Now, whatever the reason, what, what, what Ahura there is, is great. It's just Ahura is vastly underused in this movie. And that is one of the drawbacks to this movie. Uh, what's not a drawback is the, if I, do, do we know the name of the captain of the uh, Excelsior? Um, Esteban? No, it's no. That, as, that's the he's the oh, captain that, of the Grissom. Uh, the Grissom. The captain of the Excelsior Esteban? is like is like is it uh, Captain Terrell or something? No, no, it's not Terrell. What am I doing? Let's look it up. Okay. Well, I can talk a minute about uh the, sh- the, the I can talk about the Grissom. You want me? Let's talk about uh, Jesse. Captain Lipsky. Styles. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Captain Styles. Styles. Captain Styles. James yeah. B. Sicking. Captain Styles. So Captain Styles is great. He's a c- complete, also arrogant piece of shit. Uh, he's got. He tries big... to get away with warp drive. Yeah. He's the guy from he's Doogie really Howser. Uh, Captain he's Styles. The dad on Doogie Howser. Captain Styles is an arrogant sob on his big giant fucking bridge. Uh, but his whole crew. What I love is he's walking around and his whole crew looks so fucking cocky. They're all like, look, have their little readouts. The guy and from stuff. Robocop. They're like, they're like hey, we're gonna fucking get those guys. Um, and I, I, I do really like the scene where he's like filing his nails in bed. And they're yeah. like, they're like, Captain, yeah. you got to get to the bridge. He's There's like, bridge. A, we're at yellow alert. He's all like, how can we be a yellow alert in space doc? He's like, someone's stealing the enterprise. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 incredible it's like who do they think is of course it's somebody's just stealing the enterprise of course it's going to be the actual crew of the enterprise who else would steal the enterprise it's it's such a funny it's a funny thing anyway those, those rascals anyway i think let's take a quick break and then we can continue our discussion perhaps even conclude it and we'll get we'll get no, close to concluding it. all right no, we will be playing. we will be right back okay we're back Star Trek. I Star Trek to, three. I was speaking of Captain Esteban, who we'll I search for Spock. Speaking of Esteban, Esteban, the only reason we're speaking of Esteban is because I brought him up as the incorrect answer of who the captain of the Excelsior was. Right. So, but that's still a segue, even a though different, I, even a different though, veteran actor. Even though I got the wrong answer, it's still a segue, right? Even you can get something wrong and still use it as a segue. Um, that's the spice of life, baby. That and cardamom. <laughs> 
<laughs> Debatable. Do you, what do you prefer, cardamom or it depends on the or cardamom? Cumin. Cardamom is not something you take by itself. Cardamom uh, is a it's or, a strong one. It's a component. Use it lightly. Would you use cardamom or or what's the, the orange one? That saffron? Uh, bergamot. No, the one that you put in like who's with, a what with, with, with cumin a lot. Coriander. <laughs> Cor- no, not cor- it's like it's like an orangish color. Turmeric. Turmeric. I think I'm thinking. I think I'm thinking. Turmeric. Yes. What the fuck are you talking? What's, what's, what, are we, what, what, what are we talking about? You, you, Maybe I'm thinking of turmeric. You were introducing such a great point about yeah, Captain uh, Esteban. You, lo- you lost me, Dan. Well, now I'm all looking up Indian spices. Why? <laughs> this is a Star Trek podcast. Well, because you guys started it. No, we didn't. That's, yes, you did. <laughs> we're gonna no, have to you do a different cardamom. podcast about it's got spices. <laughs> you said no, because cardamom. Jesse said it was the spice of life. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was a throwaway statement. Well, <laughs> it wasn't made to derail this podcast. <laughs> Now I can't remember. It was meant to to bring it to an end. Well, okay, that, okay. Captain okay. Esteban. Okay. I want to talk about Captain Esteban and the Grissom. Okay, I want to. Okay, science vessel. Okay, so, goofy shape. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. So it's got the triangle shape. That's how science vessels. It's look, got man. the triangle shape like a normal Starfleet ship. Like let's pretend the Enterprise. But yeah. the body. Well, just pretend. Just but, pretend. But the body isn't the body. The body is not connected to the disc. What looks like the nacelles are connected to the disc. This is the opposite of normal Starfleet ships. Well, and the disc ships. is like a square thing. That's like where the scientists work. So, 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 and so, then it, ops is down at the bottom. So the Enterprise, you have the shape of the disc. It's got a little neck that goes to the body, and off the body comes the two arms that are the nacelles. But in this case, with the with the with the Grissom, the uh, the body has two arms that go like 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 ninety degrees up from each other, connected to the nacelles, which are then connected to the ship. So it's body to nacelles to ship instead of no bodies to nacelles to disc, as opposed to disc to well, body to yeah. nacelle. Body is in like what engineering section? You go, yeah, that would be. That's, yeah, yeah. That's essentially yeah. what that is. Yeah. yeah. It's just the inverse. It just takes, just like knock off. I like it. Just take the Enterprise, knock I off. I think it looks cool. It's cool. Just, no. just, just take, I think it's a cool just take, ship. Just take the Enterprise's nacelles uh, connection to the body. I'm and, sad it got blowed up. So just take the Enterprise's nacelles connection to the body and zip them up, rotate them up to touch the disc. Okay. That, I got it. <laughs> what the audience, I liked it. No, I liked it too. It was cool. What the audience at home missed out on. <laughs> In all of that mm-hmm. is the incredibly complex yoga poses yeah. that Dan was entering into as he was uh, training it was like, the physical structure of the ship. I tell it, you, it, true. It was like a. <laughs> it was like a dance he did. <laughs> oh, T A S, good old fashioned T A S. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, but the Grissom, I I enjoyed Grissom. seeing uh, John Grissom. A, a, <laughs> Uh, Grissom. <laughs> Gus Grissom. <laughs> presumably named after Gus Grissom. <laughs> he was an astronaut. Kids, look him up. Look up Gus Grissom. He was one of them astronauts. One of them US of A astronauts. Those old scientists. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> That's what a dark movie this is. <laughs> it's fun. We're having such a fun know. conversation, but it's really it's we funny. There is this undercurrent. Yeah, of we haven't gotten to the darkest horrible, part yet. Horribleness, but we will. We will. We'll bring you all down right at the end. How about that? Um, no, but the uh, the Grissom is it's it's cool that it's a science ship. Um, science is good. I like science. I'm into science. I like science. I'm into science in a big way. I like that. It, it makes the world go round. I don't know if it was well. Science observes the world going round. <laughs> I agree with that. The process of science, yeah, no, that's through which through the process of science, one can observe that's what I meant. the world g- going you know, round. I was just being through the process of science, flippant. one can craft a rudimentary model a that model. may or may not reflect <laughs> reality, <laughs> but it gets closer and closer with higher fidelity. As we learn more knowledge. But it's what, you lost all your sense of reality? You gotta you got learn the knowledge. At least yes. science is scientific. But. But how? But. We, but we how? referenced earlier. We referenced the Excelsior crew and how they were all arrogant and st- stiff and just looked like fucking assholes. The Excelsior. The casting and the directing and the framing, framing of the shots on the Grissom Bridge is totally different. These people mm. all look like nerdy, awesome scientist people, like mm-hmm. cool people that you want to hang out with. Yeah. Because they're all like into some, so they're all like. A, it's a shame when they get it blowed away. It's like they're all like, oh my God, it's a doodle doodle. It's always a one, one degree centigrade. Or blah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But they're all so excited. And then Captain uh, Esteban's hey, all like leaning hey, in. It's a centigrade. Hey. 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 It's, See, they when got you, cactus with snow on. We need to even out our voices. So when we make character caricature voices, we need to do stuff like southern and northern voices. Okay, provide an example. No. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mean, you're, you're asking. But I was just trying to do, I was just trying to do like, hey, 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 hey. 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 And now I'm doing, hey. and now, hey, now I'm doing a mid-Atlantic voice. Hey. <laughs> hey, now I'm hey. doing a mid-Atlantic voice. Hey, I'm a mid-Atlantic hey. voice. Hey, I'm a mid-Atlantic voice. Hey, hey. hey, hey, hey I'm a mid-Atlanticer. Hey. Atlanta. <laughs> mid wow, totally. That's totally, totally. Okay. So you have, we have to mix up. We have to mix up. I think that's up. enough, sir. Because <laughs> okay, we don't want to show favoritism. <laughs> Jesse's, Jesse's getting into professor mode. He's scalding us. <laughs> knocking us down. Getting, us, getting us back on track. <laughs> um, yes. What were we discussing? Grissom. 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 So, John yeah. Grissom. All the, no, you already yeah. did that joke. You did that joke already. No. Isn't it John Grisham? Yes. And that's, that's the other thing that was aggravating, <laughs> aggravating me about the joke is the joke didn't work. I wasn't I didn't call that out earlier because I thought it was apparent. <laughs> but perhaps it's good that Jesse called it out that yes, it's John Grisham. So it's funnier for me. It's though, a right, it's a joke that just is there's no reason for it. No. You can't do this on the <laughs> nothing can be done about it. Uh, okay. Uh, but unfortunately, all these cool characters who are really awesome and seem fun and cool science nerdy people, they all get blown up hmm. by an errant uh, Klingon. And the captain's all like evasive. Oton-turbino. It's like, there's a science ship. All they got is evasive. Yeah, yeah right. And they didn't uh, have enough evasive for it to work. One could question the utility of sending an unarmed science ship to a hotly contested uh, one might experimental weapon planet uh, even if there was agreement across the great powers which that's one of the implications going on behind the scenes we don't see it directly but there's these constant references to uh, you know uh, everyone got together including enemies you know like the Klingons and the Ro- whoever like all these people got together and they all agree well they're all like we we gotta like be careful about this shit because this is some fucked up shit how come the Vulcans didn't turn turn those guys in then which guys? The guy, like you know, the, the Enterprise guys that when they landed on Vulcan. Oh well, I think that by then the Vulcans were probably all worried more about the Spock stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, and who knows what the other ones? We don't get the details on like what the Klingon High Command or the others. Yeah, not till the think. next movie when there's that Klingon guy bitching about shit. Yes, yeah, or in Star Trek Five actually, isn't it Star Trek Five? I, I thought yeah, they was, yeah, I forget Star Trek Five and Star Trek Six. Um, but, uh, yes. So there's all this sort of background of geopolitical stuff, but as you were referencing, I believe it was in part one of the podcast, Dan, Mm. um, you were saying how one of the nice things about this movie is, is how tight it is. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's like focused on this particular story. Mm -hmm. They give you enough hints in the background and it doesn't dilly dally. It does not dilly. dally. The only time it dilly dallies is in the escape, but the escape was tense enough that it wasn't really dilly dallying. And it made it more tense by making it all slow. Yeah. But the, but this is a really hyper focused storyline. I like a good dilly dally with enough world building and, 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 and implication in the background so that we feel that there are, they're embedded in larger events, but the focus of those events is on what's happening at, on this ship, on what's this happening planet. Now. And yes, <laughs> yes. Or what's happening now when Raj left. Who's company? Uh, <laughs> 5,000 kilograms. Yes. Also, and not metric. Not metric. I like 3, that. 3,000 kilograms. Yeah. I like it. 2,000 kilograms. That's some, that's some Klingon shit. Wasn't at one point the guys are like, five kilograms. Well, 1,000 kilograms. Yeah. So see if you can figure out what he's saying here. It almost sounds like he's speaking Klingon. Yeah, it might be a Klingon. That might might be exactly what it is. But if you look at the closed captioning, I'm pretty sure it says 500 Kalikrit. Cams, but no, I but, didn't. I didn't look at the closed captioning. Maybe the closed captioning was translating. That's the your Klingon thing, man. Us. Maybe it. Maybe it mistranslated. Uh, King Klingons. King Klingons. Um. Well, the the uh the you script the script from Chakotea dot net says five hundred Kelly Cams, Kelly Cams too. But um, let me play this again. That does not sound like five hundred Kelly Cams to me. It doesn't sound like <laughs> one thousand Kelly Cams. Five thousand Kelly Cams. Was that an example of the Southern voice? That you just snuck in there? I didn't even mean to. Because you said, like, that doesn't sound like oh. 5,000 Well, me. being from Virginia... I'm going to say that, does, I'm gonna say that does, not, does not sound like 500 Being from Northern me. Virginia means sometimes I sound Southern, sometimes I sound like I'm from New Jersey. So Right, it's some in-betweeny stuff. Well, man. I guess it's because my, both my parents are from New Jersey. That might have something to do with it, but... They don't mm. speak like New Jersey people. <laughs> <laughs> now, please provide us with an example of what you mean. What do they not speak like? Um, you know, they don't say like 
They, they don't say yeah, like, but no, what are you doing? They're, they're, hey, what are you doing? No, not what are you like doing? that. But their accents. What are you the way, doing? The way they, you know, the yeah, their accents are shaded. Now we're talking about the years. accents of my parents. <laughs> All right, so I guess Sorry, I was talking about I was talking about the price I was talking about the price of used cars earlier, and I was just no- noting. Now we're talking about my parents' accent. Like they, they, they don't they don't have comical New Jersey. Accents. No, they, they don't. They just have like regular people. They, in New they, Jersey yeah, accents. they just say so they, it's not like a Bugs Bunny they, card. They hit some consonants harder. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh my god! What do you? When I try it, of course, it sounds like a caricature. But then right. sometimes it sounds a little like y'all, y'all. You know, sometimes a little bit just sneaks <laughs> so, in there. So sometimes it's just 500 kilo cams, and you just better right. watch out. Five, seven. Yeah, fuck those nine, motherfuckers eight, up. Eight, six, five, eight, seven, nine, six. Please five, tell me you're gonna play seven, the tape. I hope you're gonna play. Eight, seven. No, five, I have no idea. Six. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, eight. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh. <laughs> no, but that's good. I thought, and it's all good. I thought you were going to play um, uh, Close All the Shops on the Mall and the other stuff from Spaceballs. Oh. Uh, when oh. they're going through the self destruct yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Spaceballs. It's like, close down the three ring circus. Hey, that's, that, that, there, was, there was a lot to it's grab from this episode. Uh, Spaceballs? Oh shit! There goes the planet. I don't know. I remember like when yeah when he when they when they when they hit they all go Dr. down the Zayus. stairs after it's like going off and like dark helmets all like fuck. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like whoa. <laughs> there was some cussing in that movie. Yeah. Oh, that's a great movie. Mm-hmm. 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 PG thirteen. So indeed, PG thirteen. So um, well, there is of course. Uh, oh, know. were you trying to look for the next topic of conversation? Uh, well, Vulcan. I mean, the like planet Vulcan is like uh, it's like David. Rivendell on Tatooine or something. Rivendell on Tatooine. If it was like Rivendell on Tatooine, but it's much more red and fiery. There's, it's like fiery and smoky and stuff. Vulcan is uh, fire and smoke. Yeah. Is that a Vulcan? I guess that's a Vulcan. I couldn't tell, you know, in the foreground when it shows the Vulcan temple, you know, like on yeah. the ledge and yeah. stuff. Yeah, man. And there's in the foreground, there's some stairs. I couldn't tell if those stairs were like a few meters wide or like a, like like 20 I, meters wide. Massive, I, think, yeah. I, th- I don't know how big the stairs were, but they look real fucking long. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and and uh, Sarek at one point says, Well, when you see the Sarek, he says, like, or no, it's McCoy wait, saying, wait, wait. Climb the stairs of Mount Selea. Jesus. When you say long, you mean like it takes a long time to travel, not like. No, I'm just saying, forget the. the, 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 uh, the width. You're not talking about the width. Those talking bastards, about the, they live distance so long, covered from okay. the base of the stair to the top was long. It takes forever. Yeah. Regardless but... of how that t- that distance was subdivided yes. into stairs, okay. when you live like I think it was long. Years, it doesn't matter. Regardless. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at, Dan. Mm-hmm. That's my measurement. David. <laughs> Okay. Well, perhaps yes. We uh, should talk about some of the wait, fucked up shit. So, what, Rivendale. Where I'm curious though, where'd you get Rivendale from? Well, it just looked all. Why are you saying Rivendale? Yeah, because well, I'm part. I'm Virginian. That's, You're talking like me. That's hey, silly. That's I'm like, Virginian. That's not even Virginian. <laughs> Y'all from Rivendale? <laughs> Rivendale. <laughs> you live up there with. <laughs> you shouldn't. You shouldn't. With all the males. You shouldn't. You shouldn't assume those things about people with southern accents, Patrick. Assume what? Well. That they live in Rivendell? No, you were my. You know, I could could tell what you were. Coded language. Okay. (laughs) The 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 way that Vulcan was kind of. I'm just kidding. It was all sort of fantasy, like you know, the the way they were with their, you know, the the ceremonial aspect, the 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 priesty stuff. um, The priesty priest. It's cool how they like the sort of spear scepter things and Vulcan gets sort more and more funny headdresses fleshed out as time goes on because we it see it a little bit a little bit on TOS a little bit on TAS we see <laughs> yes 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 I ask for foul torp <laughs> yes yes I was thinking exactly the same thing I was saying this Yahoo. whole thing was was influenced, yeah. uh, or or somehow, if not influenced by, emerged from the same cultural ether mm-hmm. that that decided you needed a bunch of gobbledygook. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do some magic gobbledygook business. Mm-hmm. Fuck around with people. All I was going to say was that yeah, Vul- we see Vulcan in Star Trek, uh, the motion picture. Now we see it here, and we get a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, then uh, more and more Enterprise. We discussed that Enterprise episode. Not Looks not like they not but a few weeks quality, ago. Though. 
Well, yeah, it yeah. did look like they had poor air quality. I, yeah, Vulcan never that's, looks... That's, what it, does. that's it, what it is. It rarely looks, I should say rarely, it rarely looks like a great mm. place to be. No, it's got nothing on it. But it's like Rivendale in the sense that... Rivendale. In the sense... That it's like it's Rivendell in the sense that it has... It's got some it's, weirdos. It's got, it's got fancy folks. And, and it's like, got them fancy folks. Like, you're saying Vulcans are like elves. Oh, you mean Are like, you saying just because they're pointy ears? Are you talking well, about... Well, there's, like, there's that... <laughs> connection too yeah. which is a fair connection yeah. mm-hmm. uh it wasn't it wasn't like that wasn't like foremost in my mind but that's, it, that's another bit the uh you could be referring to when you're talking about the funny people you could be referring to uh all those vulcan ladies with the right angle hands mm. did you notice the right angle hand people no i did i noticed i know what ladies you're, i know what ladies they're you're... all like holding their hands all in a really bizarre and looks extremely uncomfortable to hold for a long time i know time. Who you're talking right about angle but, thing. but i don't remember their hands po- you got to go back and watch the movie got to go back you got to watch the movie dan you got to watch it the right angle hand people and then standing right next to the right angle hand people are the big oversized structured hoodie person where it looks like a tiny little little head in a big old thing there's a ton of bald vulcans mm. bald bald. You said, you said, there's a ton of bald vulcans <laughs> like you were forced gump <laughs> Well, a little bit of stinging rain. I was there born, was a little bald Vulcans. I was, I was born and raised. A little in, bit of stinging rain. I was born and raised in Virginia. She she and taught it po- and it pops out from time to time. She taught me how to dangle. <laughs> <laughs> or wait, he taught her how to dangle. Oh snap! Wait, no, who taught who how to dangle? I don't know what don't the remember, fuck dude. you're talking about. She dude. taught me how to climb. That's not appropriate. She, ta- this she taught me how to climb. I taught her how to dangle. Oh, That's no. from Forrest Gump. Oh, okay. All right. I, I haven't seen that movie in a long time because I don't think it's that great. Well, no, it's not. It's a little silly. I like Robert it's Zemeckis. Entertain, it's entertaining, but it's maybe. Like, I, think, I don't like Robert maybe. Zemeckis. I think when you, I, I liked it as a kid. It when bumps you go me back out. And, when you watch it, when I've, when I've watched it more recently, I'm just like, ah, this is a weird, fucked up no, kind of weird well, no, so It's weird indulgent. Movie. It's an indulgent it, I don't like it. It, it kind of makes, it kind of. I don't bu- know what the message is. No. no. The thing is, is it was fun the first time I watched it. Now when I watch it, it's like kind of bums me out in this weird yeah. way. It makes me feel bad inside. It's, I don't uh, think it's got a good message. It's some kind of baby boomer nonsense. Probably. Mm. All right. But. But you know what's not baby boomer nonsense? Um, Star Trek. Star Trek 3, the search for Spock with a bunch of crazy, crazy Vulcan business. <laughs> crazy Vulcan business. I uh, ask for foul tor pot. We discussed earlier how this movie... Uh, Who is the keeper of the Katra? One reason, one reason it's important is uh, to, the, to the lore... To the zeitgeist? Trek, no, to the no. lore of Star Trek, not not to the zeitgeist, either the contemporaneous zeitgeist or the zeitgeist. contemporary zeitgeist, the current zeitgeist, the polter zeit, the time ghost zeit, zeitgeist. Any, zeitgeist means ghost, time, time ghost. Do you have any polter zeites? I mean, it well, translates. It, means it, 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 means, it translates as the spirit of the times. I didn't say but, yeah. but I didn't, it literally means time ghost. What is what is polter zeit mean? Uh, uh, polter is like polter a polter time. polter time. Polter time? Yes. It's like it's certain. It's like it's polter time? Yeah. It's, it's like, like it's polter time. <laughs> it's hammer time. Why is it hammer time? Okay. The, uh, again. The because point, you wish it. The point, the point I was attempting to make, and I will now m- insist to make. Chief O'Brien. Is Vulcan that, mysticism. Uh, we learn a lot about Klingons in this movie, but we also learn about a lot about Vulcans. And we learn a lot about love. We learn about the Katra. We learn about the idea of transferring the Katra. We learn about the bald Vulcans and the right angle Vulcans. We <laughs> <laughs> the right angle Vulcans. We already we were already familiar with uh female Vulcan priestesses, but mm-hmm. we get a cool new one, which is pretty rad. Tall, she's really fucking great. Uh she's super excellent in in this role. Balima. Um, we get to see the long stair- stairways and uh, all that business. We get to see the cool bathrobes. I always wonder if those are really comfortable or or if they're burlappy. Or Whatever if Spock was wearing, it's I like think terry was, cloth. I think it was it's like terry cloth. Yeah, yeah. it's I like think, is it, terry cloth sucks up water or something. Is that what sucks up water? It's like a towel. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's like a towel robe. Yeah, it's like a towel robe. Yeah, do you don't think it's burlappy? No, I don't, you don't think, think it's so at all. <laughs> I not, didn't, I didn't not, at say all. Like not at all. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Hey, not at all. Hey, hey. hey. What are you doing? Hey. What are you talking what about? Are you, hey. And shit, hey, what are you doing? Hey. Not at all. Get out of here. What, hey, Jesse. With or without. What are you going to do? I'm going to get out of here. What are you going to do? I'm going to get out of here. What are you going to do? It's kind of like, uh, it's like. I'll well, tell you what I'm going to do. 
Okay, I'm gonna end my. I'm, oh, I was gonna get even deeper into it, and I decided let's, against it. Let's so. just get back to the podcast. Yeah. I okay, think we're, we're, coming, <laughs> we're starting to we're starting to degrade a bit here. Okay, Patrick, <laughs> you can continue with your point. I think we're providing a sufficient amount of content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going, uh, content is content. Going above and beyond here. Do you talk about a movie in which Kirk's son gets fucking stabbed to death by a Klingon? Right. And Kirk, Kirk William Shatner does some of his best acting ever, and is all like, "You Klingon bastard." You killed my son, and he falls Tell down. Me the he, he falls down. He's like you. Klingon bastard, you killed my son. Yeah, and oh, and by the way, it's not you, Klingon bastard. You killed my son. It's you, Klingon bastard. You've, as in you have killed my son. Wait, Kirk mm-hmm. is is a nerd. He's grammatically correct. Yeah. Right, right. Even Klingon in his grief. Klingon bastard, you killed my son. Klingon bastard, you killed my son. Yeah, there's a you've in there. He's you've well spoken. Killed my son. He is. He's very well spoken. That's how you get to be a captain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was weird. That was that weird. Was a weird little heart. There's no special effects there. That was. So you're talking weirdness. about yeah, like he he. You were saying like how he like you know it's it's anticlimactic in a way, but that somehow makes it more climactic because it just kind of happens. Yeah. And she's like, oh, he's dead. And it's he, brutal. And, and and it's like all quiet, and it's like it, there's no big like oh, yeah. it's just it's just this slow. Re- it's like you, the audience, are realizing it along with Kirk that like yeah. oh shit, that's and then he knows up. he's gonna kill them all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, <knows. laughs> he does that thing where he. Come on. Best. He leans on the back railing. He sort mm-hmm. of hides his face from his crew just for a second. He gives himself a moment, and then he's like, "All right, we're gonna fuck these motherfuckers up." And here's how we're gonna do it. And he fi- he just sort of figures out the whole plan to lure well, them onto the ship. Not and then even blow ten minutes later, he, he kind of like the whole sun death thing. They kind of move on from yes. that, and they they never really come back to that yes. too much. Except from then on out, he hates. We know he hates Klingons, but they just kind of he. They even play the fun, happy yeah. adventure music. Like not even ten minutes later. I agree, and I think that one of the flaws of this movie is that as powerful as that death of David scene is. And and the sub- and the motivation it gives Kirk both for the scene in this movie as well as his later animosity that comes up in Star Trek VI and is in a sort of a pivotal, pivotal, <laughs> pivotal uh, bit of info for Klingon motiv- passage of kill my son. A bit of motivation for Star Trek VI. That's all well and good. But it also sort of introduces this issue where, yeah, they kind of go back to forget. They sort of forget about David being dead. Pretty quickly. Forget about it. It's not really best. mentioned too much later. And what are you talking about? I think more potentially more problematic is it sort of fucks around with like what's the exact theme of this movie? Mm. Is the theme of the movie that uh, Kirk was willing to sacrifice a shitload of stuff like to help Spock? Like is this was Spock's life sort of fundamentally worth more than? The right. Grissom and uh, not that that well, was Kirk's the needs, fault. Well, the needs but, of the one is greater than the needs yes, of the many. And, and I was saying in, in part one of the podcast, I was saying that uh, something, I re- as I recall, about I really like that end line. I like the reversing of mm-hmm. that. It's it's a loaded statement as a result of that. But the killing of David sort of doesn't yeah. fit into that. I buy into the whole, like, we risk our lives. We risk going to jail. I don't buy into... I don't have to worry that much about my son being murdered right. because of here's the end result is a sort of a, a goofy version of spy. Yeah. The, um, and speaking of the reversing thing, so they, I would say that when he says the needs of the one outweigh the needs of the many, that definitely follows uh, through Starfleet um, through later episodes of Trek, like that one episode of TNG where uh, Picard has to decide whether or not he's going to give that uh, virus to the Borg to, uh, to, <laughs> to uh, genocide all of them or not, and he decides against it. And um, but the reason he decides against it is because he doesn't want to commit genocide. Well, that's a case where that would be the needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few, right? I could just kill off a bunch of Borg. It's a lot of people, but he's saving more lives as a result. But Picard doesn't do it in I, Borg. All right. So regular listeners will know that Dan has developed over the time. We've been doing this podcast nearly 200 episodes now. This is episode 191. And over Mm. that time, I believe it's fair to say that we've gotten better 
at being podcasters. We've been gotten better in all sorts of metrics. And one what? Thing, and one thing that Dan's gotten real good at is bringing up the, the episode of TNG, I Borg, and specifically the whole ge- genociding the Borg with a virus. Thing. I know what I did. He's be, he, it used to be par- fairly ham-fisted how he got that into a discussion. <laughs> but here he's he's really learned what? the skill of, of yeah, finding yeah, little hooks. Slipped it right in. Tricking us. Tricking us. Tricking us into hearing this. Thing. I'm wondering if if Be we what you wish we for. haven't ever we haven't ever discussed Iborg. I mean, we have, but not at, we haven't mm-hmm. done that as an episode that we. Would you rather on. have an Iborg or receive an Eborg? <laughs> I want to know if if we event if we just did Iborg if we would do did a podcast episode on, on Iborg. <laughs> Would it sort of exercise it from your system? <laughs> I think I would think? go into an infinite loop and I would just kind of zap out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that intrigues me. Well, we'll have to see what your algorithm comes up with uh, somewhere down the line. But anyway, mm. back to back to Star Trek. You know what? We should take a quick break. Yeah. And then, and then when we finish, when yeah. we're done, then we'll like, wrap things up. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we have returned to so, the concluding segment of our show. So have we? Have we? we? Have. So okay. speaking of, you know, some you know, some deep heavy stuff and then kind of moving on from that, would you take this part as comedic or no, or maybe a little bit? Nah. Wait, we gotta Okay. Well, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> All right. Um, this this scene right here. I have yeah. had enough of you! I love like it. when he screams. Oh, that's totally funny. No, I mean, I the, no, no, the it's, first part, the first. But the, what was the question? Is it comedic or or? For, 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 yeah, I was joking a second ago. Him falling to his death was not the comedic part. But, yeah. but the whole thing of like, oh, I have I mean, had enough kind of, of you. That, yeah, that was fun. I have had enough. Yeah, of you. Yeah. That's the cadence. The cadence, the cadence is hard. The cadence you is slightly different than what you expect. You don't get it the first time yeah. because it's a Shatner. It's a Shatner cadence. Yeah, because I wanted to go. I have had enough yes. of you. But, yeah. Or I but, have had. It is not. It's I, have, I have had enough of you. I have had enough. Oh no, I got it wrong. You, you got it. You. Right. You, yeah, we both you. got it wrong. We both got it wrong. Because it's hard. It's, it's a hard. hard cadence to do. I have had. I can't even do it. We can, yeah. We shouldn't bother. We shouldn't bother. Leave we it to shouldn't the, further embarrass uh, ourselves. We should leave it to the professionals. Unrepeatable. <laughs> Unrepeatable. There's only one man in the universe. One. Per, there's only one person in the universe that can do it. There's only one man. That's William Shatner, <laughs> who went to space <laughs> and was all like, all I saw was death. Yeah. That's kind of I a mean, bummer. it was a really profound thing, but everyone was like, oh, did you have fun? He was like, I just saw death. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm man. going to die. He's, he's like he's the only one of these people who's still alive. It's like uh, it's like wow, we all know no. we, Sulu and, we all Sulu have and it, yeah. we all have it drilled in our head how insignificant we are. You got spe- trepanated? Was it a self trepanation? No, we <laughs> all talking have about it, drilling into the head. No, I'm saying that we all have it drilled into our head that we are insignificant in this world, but. William Shatner actually experienced that feeling apparently. Yes, yeah. So that's what, that's what gave <laughs> Which him is, some uh, problem. Hard, hard hard to get through to some people with that feeling. I think probably a, overall a positive thing for him. But uh, Admiral, yeah. Ad- Admiral, uh, Admiral. But you were saying something, Dan. You were saying something. I said I was. I have had enough of you. Was that oh, yeah. comedic? It's kind um, of comedic. Yeah, it was whimsical. Sure. Yeah, it was semi fun. semi badass. Semi, it was pretty badass. Uh, it was good. It's a good. It's a good memorable part. It's pretty awesome. See, he kicked, he kicked that Klingon. He kicked that Klingon's ass. Like you know, I don't know if I buy that, but you know. Well, he. he I, what I I did think it was cool that he had some troubles. It wasn't like yeah. He, and also like David love, David getting killed by a Klingon was like yeah, of course. I mean, mm-hmm. he's a yep. kind of skinny little sign. Oh, he's he, a worse. He's a little Tom Hanks guy. Tell you, I don't know why in this movie because I don't get I don't get it in Star Trek Two, but in Star Trek Three, David comes like uh, comes across as a Tom Hanks figure. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah, I he guess really, I can see that. He's I got some mannerisms. He's got some mm-hmm. facial wow! business. What? <laughs> wow! Bosom buddies style what? action. Wow! That's my Tom Hanks impression. <laughs> wow! Can you do it? You've done that before. Can you do the part where in, in the money pit when, when, he, he, falls through the when floor? he falls through the floor and gets stuck in I don't the... Even, uh, I, I don't even remember... Like, <laughs> 
I, I can't do fake laughter. It freaks me out. Or when he eats all the when testicles. When I start fake and... laughing too much, I start laughing for real, and then I can't stop, and it sucks. That's a, upsetting to learn. Yeah. It sucks when you like laugh so hard you get scared. Um, but, uh... <laughs> all right, yes. <laughs> so, wait, we were talking about what now? Uh, <laughs> Kirk, Tom Hanks. Kirk, Kirk kicked that guy's ass. Okay, Kirk kicked that guy's uh, ass. He, well, he didn't really. He, he, he got the upper hand. Mm-hmm. And and he got the upper hand in classic Star Trek style because he was trying to help Krug and Krug was like ah fuck you we'll both die and then Kirk was like all right fuck you. Speaking of Krug, um, um, this 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 is fifteen second clip. I think it's 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 uh really kind of sums up his character. So um, I can ask for silence on this clip, please. <laughs> this is sixteen seconds. This is an important Krug line. Oh yes, new cities, homes, and the country. Your woman at your side, children playing at your feet, and overhead, fluttering in the breeze, the flag of the Federation. Charming. Station. Station! (laughs) (laughs) You got me. Uh, That was good. I was not expecting that. (laughs) No one sees the the station. No one no one expects the station. The yeah. oh, I've got a couple. I've got two two small, two short uh, questions for you. Here's the traditional guess the context based on a short portion of the line. All right. Take one. Take one. Uh, that's from the star. That's the log from the log from the log with Shatner with with Kirk. Engine room flight recorder visual star date eight one two eight point seven eight. Yep. Go. Go. Enhance. Out of sounds danger. Like, sounds like he's saying shit at the end, but he's yeah. not. Okay, this is a new one I'm trying out. This is a new. This is a new <laughs> I, one. I don't understand. This is a new game show I'm trying okay, out. A new so game before show. it was guess the context based on a short portion of the line. Okay. This one's called try and figure out the visual from the sound. Okay. Okay. That's I what think, this game. I think shows. I think I get it. I'm sure we'll understand it more once we hear the sound. So and and Jesse and I will attempt. To guess the visual. Try and figure out the visual from a sound. From the sound. Okay. Okay. That's in the bar. In the freaky... In the McCoy bar. What were they doing? Uh, that I don't remember. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you five-sixths of a point for that. Jesse, do you remember? Nope. They were playing that... that, that <laughs> they were playing that... They were playing that hologram version of Sopwith. Oh, word, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. I remember. Yeah, yeah. That was wild. Yeah, There's a lot of wild, wild stuff in that bar. I like bars where... Sop with being bars old... Where the, you, every nook and cranny has some some shit going on. So Sop with is an old 90s... Uh, or is it late 80s? I think late 80s. Late 80s At least game. Sop with one. Sop with two kind of sucked. Yeah, but that's what it looked like. It, it kind of like looked like their version of Sop. There Sop... was some cool like computer... I like when they... There was some cool wireframe computer like... Looks like it's it's the movie was made in ninety three, but it had some like looking yeah. from the eighties graphics going on, which I which I kinda dug. Which movie uh, are you talking about? Uh this one that we just That's saw. Not, from 93. This is not from ninety three. Oh wait, when was so, this from? It's more like eighty three. Eighty three, eighty four. Oh wait, what was I thinking? Oh I was thinking ah, what was I thinking? <laughs> what were you <laughs> thinking? <laughs> thinking? Oh, no. Are you thinking of Jurassic Park? <laughs> no, I think I well, regardless, whatever you were thinking, um, the main point I wanted to make was that Sop With as a game was really good, except it had one drawback, was that it was tied to the to the computer's system clock. Oh, yeah. And so if you played it on different computers, it would be faster or slower. And if you tried to play it on like a Pentium or something, yeah. it would just go like, it was unplayable. There was yeah, no way to play you it. You have to get like an old... Uh, 286 uh, a virtual machine. Yes. Uh, v- but you had to box. wait a little bit before you could actually get an ac- an adequate uh, 286 virtual machine because you, you you had to wait. There were a few generations after the 286 that you had to do it. I think I must have read 1984 and thought 1994. I don't know what I was thinking. But okay, there was appropriately what placed 80s graphics in, the, in this yeah. movie, which was, was cool. Super duper 80s graphics. Super, super 80s Why graphics. Why do you do this to us? I... <laughs> All right, what's the next? <laughs> Jesse, why did you do that? Do you have any more sounds? Jesse, Jesse. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? <laughs> why did you do that? <laughs> why would you do this? Why? 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 But why? But why? Why? Why, why not? Okay. Why couldn't you have red blood like any normal human? Oh, well, that's not the same one. Uh, <laughs> uh, any fi- we have to start getting into our final thoughts here and start thinking um, about closing things so, down. So Krug, there's this guy Maltz. Do you remember this guy Maltz? That's uh, Maltz. Isn't that the Larry Cat? 
I had trouble connecting the Klingon names uh, so, to the different Klingon characters. Right. So I looked at the closed captioning and the script. So this is... Maltz! M-A-L-T-Z. Maltz. And then, again, they say Maltz again, except... Malk! He says milk. Milk? Like milk, like in The Simpsons, yeah. that episode of The Simpsons where they drink milk it's instead like of milk. vitamin R. <laughs> 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 milk or milk or whatever. Right, so first he says... Malt! Milk. And then he says... Milk! Which for some reason he switches the Klingon version of malts to malk or what I don't know what was going on. Does there. it say that in the captioning? No, as it doesn't. Well? I just can't. Does it say malts in both it's, times. It says in the captioning and the script it's malts both times. He's talking to malts. And then there's a third one. I'm talking I'm to malts. Talking to malts. Hey, this guy is talking the malts. to malts. And I got you, you got, got the malts. You got the malts. Okay. Then the third one is malk. And that just goes malk. Malk. Kumatu. Kumatu. Malk. So it goes from malts to malk to malk. More. There's some inconsistency. Mark. Mark. They also Mark. say success, except it's not really kapla, right? right. It's, a, it's, a, it's something a little different. Uh, so this Where's is the damn antimatter inducer? <laughs> so, so it's a little premature. I, kapla. It's not kapla. It's not kapla, or at least it's not clearly kapla. Doesn't seem to me that it's clearly kapla in this in this case. So there's, there's still it's some not clearly going kapla. On. Mm-hmm. I liked when uh, uh, McCoy is given the warning on the, uh, if we're like, yeah, we'll do some odds and ends here. Hmm. Uh, bits and boobs, odds and ends. Bits and boobs. Bits and boobs. <laughs> is it bits and bobs? It's bits and bobs. Not bits and boobs. I, I don't heard, think anyone I've says never heard that. No one says bits and bobs. Jesse, have you heard bits and bobs never or bits and boobs? My, never in my life. I am I think I've said bits and bobs before. I've said nooks and crannies. Mm. Yeah, but I've asked you to not to say think, that so often. I, I used to think <laughs> nooks, nooks and crannies were special like yeah. little fudgies that were in the bread, but it actually means like the way the English muffin opens. It's got nooks and crannies. When I was like a wee youngin, I thought they were some kind of magic jam or something was what nooks and crannies. I thought nooks yeah. and crannies was some kind of weird jam. <laughs> because they, Thomas's English muffin, you open it has nooks and crannies, yeah. but I it's mean, referring to the topology, not like yeah. what's in yeah, it. The, the, the texture. Yeah. So you're saying that the over. Topology. You're saying it over and over again, and you're mi- <laughs> and ignoring <laughs> your, your request. You, and you were repeatedly miming the opening of an English muffin. Right. <laughs> Just to be clear, what's going on here? <laughs> what stage of this two-part conversation we're at? Okay. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Free content, people. We provide you free content when we go on vacation. <laughs> this is your free content. We're off having fun. So um, we're we're, sh- we're getting all schnitzeled up, mm, and you motherfuckers have to listen to this. Are you, if you were done with your point, I had one 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 thing I wanted. to Oh, play. I was saying uh, when McCoy is being warned, and then. And then I just always liked that line delivery uh, of DeForest Kelly when he was like, I choose danger. Mm. I mean, that doesn't sound anything like him, but I like the way he said, I choose danger. Yeah. Or he says, I choose the danger. Right. Which I like even better. Yeah. It's not like I choose danger generically. This this, this script, this script has really good grammar because it's like Kirk is like, you've, you have, you've killed my son. You have killed my son. McCoy is like, I choose the danger as in this specific circumscribed danger, not danger as a generic concept. There aren't going to be any damn (laughs) permits. I I don't have the danger one, unfortunately. I do like the, uh, the damned permits. How do you get permits? permits? Yeah. How do you get permits for doing? a damned illegal thing <laughs> he says he says permits and Uhura says Uhura says some line um too i can't remember what it is but she they, they it's it's along the lines of instead of permit do you say jesse patrick do you say hey learners, how's it going do you say learners permit or learner permit learners permit permit i say permit too and so no one says permit. Some people say permit. For example, no, McCoy says said permit just hey, then. Hey, he's got you there, Jesse. Uh, per- I'm afraid Dan has got you there. And, oh no! And <laughs> <laughs> oh no! He just played the tape. <laughs> I played back the tape. Um, also, uh, Uhura says um, she doesn't say ambassador. She says ambassador. She says like Im- ambas- Im- Ambassador? Am, am, what did she say? Ambassador. 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 Am, I wish, Good God, I, man. <laughs> uh, I have in am, my notes that Kirk and Spock... It's like um, ambas- ambassador. Uh, ambassador. I think she says ambassador. Kirk and Spock, when they're still ambassador. on Genesis, before they get beamed away, before Kirk is all like, Chewy! Chew! Um, Kirk and Spock are like... Genesis! Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh, wild, crying, oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Genesis I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ears, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just I forgot because I mentioned Genesis. It means you have to play that tape. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. On Genesis, before they get beamed away, I, I said that uh, uh, Kirk and Spock are like Sam and Frodo on Mount Doom. Mm. They're all hugging each other, and mm-hmm. there's all sorts of explosions and stuff. Except yeah. they don't think they're going to die because Kirk is all like, "I'm going to, I'm going to call the Klingons. I'm going to trick them into. Yeah. I'm going to trick John Larroquette into beam, beam, beaming mm. us up." Uh, you notice Kirk is wearing like a weird pirate shirt. Super Nintendo. Like, why is he wearing that? Like, when he takes off his jacket at a certain point, he's just wearing some crazy ass uh, pirate shirt. Yeah, I liked it. I had nothing against it. It was just, it was not like he the normal Kirk poofy. stuff. It was all poofy, squashbuckly. Yeah, the I, kind of thing I wish was in style which, currently. I think that's a. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you were me- mentioning earlier, Jesse, that uh, they, that Kirk was wearing some some kind of. Yeah, weird... he had goofy civilian clothes. And it's funny that you said you said uh, puffy shirt. That's a sort of a Seinfeld yes. thing. Yes, right. Maybe there Seinfeld was, got was, it from this There movie. was a guy. The the guy on the bridge in the beginning. The one of the trainee guys on the bridge was an actor that was in Seinfeld as Jackie Childs. Whoa! Um, oh yeah! Oh yeah! And, and he was also yeah. in that He's TOS great. episode, Mary, as a boy. Yeah, which I w- wasn't a part of because I got COVID. Oh, that's right. But we did I, was, I was I was going to say absent. that if I was there. That's right. I remember anyway, that. Anyway, I wasn't, now. so it mm. doesn't matter. And if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> For real, dude. Um, Mighty Morphin Gro- Mi- Mighty Morphin Gross Spock face. I know. Oh, yeah. We, we briefly touched on that. Yeah, before, I, I but... said it was like Wolfman, but yeah, it yeah. was your same thing though. Mighty it was. Morphin. It was one of those things where I, I'm not saying it's bad that it's in the movie. It's kind mm. of uh, makes you think <laughs> a, little a little bit. I, but yeah, it seemed <laughs> it was sort of a little out of nowhere. Where I was like, oh my god. This is gross. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, this is this movie is briefly gross, and then it's back to normal. <laughs> it's just a good old Star Trek story. Uh, <laughs> see, okay, that made me very uncomfortable. That was Spock. Uh, another thing that I don't know why we could, we we just totally skipped over, skirted around, probably because it's just sort of depressing. But I think it's important to to note in any discussion. Of Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock is uh, the famous line uh, or famous exchange between Kirk and McCoy when they've beamed down to the planet and the Enterprise is just blown up. Which, by the way, that sequence is just fucking mind blowing mm-hmm. uh, and depressing when you think about it. Oh yeah, you know that 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 whole Be, that whole in that moment that whole shot it. was awesome because. In a way, it wasn't necessary. Like they didn't have to yeah. go through that whole. They could have just blown it up and moved on with yeah. it. But they had this very. They took their time. They took their time to have this like murdering the character we love. Yeah, yeah. and then they sit there and they're pondering and watching it, and you get time to think about yeah. it and think about all the stuff you're doing. It was a great scene that, like, it was that they thought to add something like that because um, it, it was really effective. I agree, and and unlike David's death. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> which was briefly effective and then sort of disappeared. He's dead. This lingers on not just in this movie, but in the in the history of the lore mm. of uh, of this particular crew. But but Kirk and uh, McCoy have that famous exchange where Kirk says, "My God, Bones, what have I done?" Oh yeah, and McCoy says, uh, "What you had to do, what you always do, turn death into a fighting chance to live." Right. Uh, you can debate how clever that line is or not, but it certainly has an impact. It's evocative. My God, Bones. What have I done? What have I done? Have Again, I done? Yeah. the perfect cadence, the cadence that makes the, makes the line more than it is, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always thought that was a fairly profound thing, too, as, especially as a kid watching that. Uh, he destroyed the Enterprise. He had to, in his opinion. You know, that was what he had to do to save the day. But it was, it was truly the last-ditch thing. It's another thing that elevates Krug in terms of an antagonist, because none of the other antagonists made Kirk destroy the fucking ship. He was always able to save the ship. He might have lost a few people here and there. Uh, but Krug... Put him in a position where he had no choice. He had well, to. He had to scuttle the ship. What you were saying that line was one of the the basic summations of the movie. It was when um, when he was like, "But at what cost? Your ship, your son." And then Kirk says, "If I hadn't tried, the cost would have been my soul." Yes. Like I think that's that's pretty thought provoking. I, I thought that was I a agree. good summary of this. It gi- it gives a a reason, a catalyst for the yeah. whole thing to happen. It's like it just had to happen. I agree, and I think that way. ties together with that the good of the many outweighs well that's the, the good of the one outweighs and the that's the, the other many. summation that yeah. i was cut- they they're connected because kirk you know again so much religious 
uh, imagery and religious language in in this in this movie. Uh, Kirk refers to a soul. Uh, does he believe in a soul in in, mm. a, in a more structured religion religious sense, or is he just referring it to it to his essence or whatever? I think it's probably the latter. Uh, probably the latter, but regard it, it, it's uh, it's immaterial because the, the the function is the same, at least mm. in a literary sense. That he uh, he was saying that. Uh, he, he he's not happy <laughs> that these tragedies befell him, but that he had no choice. He had to make this attempt, even at the risk of his career and his life and these unexpected costs that he did not think he was going to lose the enterprise. He did not think he was going to randomly lose his son to a fucking Klingon. Mm -hmm. These were not things he, he took on. Right. And, and that's a, another sort of classic thing where it's like, okay, you're brave to take on an adventurous journey and you think you're risking X, Y, and Z. And through the journey is where you realize, Oh, in fact, you're also risking uh, one, two, and, and three. And what, <laughs> Whatever the appropriate coding is. And and because the episode is, or the movie was so focused on one event, it's like the what have I done is kind of like everything went by in a blur, mm -hmm. like in a, in, a, in a flurry, and you're just like, wait a minute, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. So we'll get that way. I think masterfully done, masterfully mm -hmm. framed, another iconic shot from the movie and from Star Trek more generally. This movie is loaded with them. As, as underrated as it often is and mm -hmm. as ignored as it often is, uh, so many iconic things that impact the rest of the the franchise happen right here in this film. Um, some notes about the ship: the quarters, the or the hallways uh, are about like a third of the size of like TNG, the Enterprise D. Well, they also no, they, they were like they were like pretty thin. But they but they use these sets for uh, TNG. There's a TNG uses a lot of these sets redressed though and reformatted. And, yeah. Okay, like Start but but the, what we mostly see are are wide ass quarters in in, in TNG. Yeah, though. but so they, I'm not saying it's not the same set i'm just yeah. saying that but they, what, what they i use see all this they use all this it's just I'm, it's it's fascinating what ca they can do with camera right. angles and stuff right. to, and and also just rebuilding a sets uh i think it's a rebuilding i think it was, goes beyond camera angles because i really because i'm thinking particularly when they when they go to spock's quarters and there's like there's no entry tape and they're like trying oh to, yeah yeah they, no, they look like that, that scene looked like those was some pretty oh yeah quarters. there's absolutely some some narrow and what was action. the deal with those security guys with the floopy red helmets and the uniform like with some hilarious uniform yeah, choices. There was, was it, there, how many, there was some wearing some kind of leather leather um uh, quaff i i am actually i find it disappointing that from tng onward uh with very few exceptions the uh non-starfleet officer uniform game it goes way down uh, in Star Trek because it tends to just be everyone's wearing essentially a version of the Starfleet uniform right. or some variation mm -hmm. on it. Uh, occasionally you'll get like, Oh, the scientist uniform, but it's nothing, it's nothing fun. It just looks like some overalls mm -hmm. or some shit. It's not some goofy ass floppy hat with some weird yeah. piping, some yeah. thick ass piping and shit. Uh, TOS had some like colorful, weird. Yeah. I'm thinking, I can't remember yeah. the episode, but we, we were, we, uh, uh, we did an episode about it and it was, uh, yeah, there was wearing some kind I think the whole ship was poisoned or something and they were wearing special suits and it was like these purple, yes. red and yellow yeah. pipes that were like taped. It was ridiculous. Their, uh, yeah. Going it was totally ridiculous. Yeah. We got to go back to having a little bit more ridiculous stuff. Um, it seemed like uh, a bummer when, when the dude was like, everyone gets to go on shore leave. Except for you, Mr. Scott, you have to like stay and do some shit. Now, normally Mr. Scott, Scotty would like to probably like to like, you know, work on a ship instead of go on shore leave. Yeah. But at the same time, like he had to do it on the Excel. He there, wanted to work on the fun. enterprise. Yeah. yeah. And oh. they were being sort of somewhat uns unceremonious when they're like, Oh yeah, we're decommissioning the enterprise. Don't even worry about it, Scotty. Don't even worry about Just it. Go hang out and help out the, the, the people over on that big fat Excelsior. Um, at one big point, puffy Excelsior. At, sexy. At one point, uh, sexy Kirk, Excelsior. Kirk, uh, Kirk comments on, on Scott's, uh, Scotty's, uh, uh, estimation of how long it takes something to get fixed. Yeah. Um, he says, he's like, do you take, what is he? He's like, do you take, like, every, do you always uh, quadruple your estimates? Or something by a factor of three Yeah, because he said you, you, it'll take eight weeks, but he'll, He'll yeah. do it for you in two. Yeah, it says, oh, here it and is. And that's a gag that plays throughout and is referenced in Star Trek yeah. repeatedly yeah. in the future. He says, have you always multiplied your repair estimates by a factor of four? Yeah. And then, yeah, there was the uh, the episode um, 
relics in TNG where uh, LaForge goes, yeah, well, I told the captain I'd have this analysis done in an hour. And Scott says, how long will it really take? And he goes, an hour. He nah. says, you didn't tell him how long it would really take, did you? And LaForge is like, of course I did. So that was like, yeah. Uh, so they're they're not even, yeah, they they they, they began like that the joke. Lower deck thing. So they they, ref, they they acknowledged that joke pretty early on in the TOS yeah. era. So, oh, I wanted to play, uh, uh, see if this music hit. Horner's music in oh, Star Trek 2 and 3, even though, yes, there's a lot of repetition Petition between the two. Um, I, I often have difficulty separating the two because I listen to these soundtracks on repeat together mm -hmm. so much so they intermingle. But there's a lot that's just, it's just so evocative. I think it's some of the best Star Trek mu music, the best matching of music to what's being conveyed on the oh, screen this in Star Trek in my humble, tiny, this, tiny view. This, mm. this wasn't what I was referring to, uh, about to talk about, but yeah, they reminded me of this. Spock. It's like a western. I have been and always shall the be. The harp in the background. Your friend. That, that's brilliant. Me. I really like that part. Yeah. Um, but the part that I was talking, that I was referencing, uh, was I wanted to see if these sounded similar at all to you guys. So this is from Star Trek. Yeah, I know what you're going to play. This is from something else. There's a lot of noise Star going Wars. on. Yeah, Star Wars. But yeah, is that what you thought I was going to play? Uh, actually, no. I was. I thought you were going to point out that James Horner uh, steals from himself repeatedly mm. throughout his career, well, going back to Alien and like you know going up to you know Titanic and other shit like oh, that. Oh, I, I wasn't actually. Um, yeah, I wasn't implying that any that he stole that from Star like, Wars. He takes like there are riffs in Star Trek's one and two that are straight up lifted from previous movies and totally used again in other movies that came out the same year. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Horner was famous for that. Okay, um, I didn't know that, but. They work. <laughs> he, he, when he picks the things he uses, it, it usually works. I guess they're not that similar to Star Wars, but for some reason, this reminded me of that fight scene in it's Star Wars. Like, yeah, well, but there's the, some jingles and jingling and jangling. What I like about I don't that, think he ripped. I don't think he ripped it off. And it's just and Star Wars was inspired by the whole planet. It's already a ripoff. That right? riff. Yeah. That riff. You, yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. But that riff you play just there is also one of the another core memory because it was the one used in the in the brilliant uh preview uh for or teaser for star trek 6 the undiscovered country mm. where they're projecting all sorts of scenes from star trek throughout history on the the belly of the ship mm. and, as it hoves into view and goes to warp yeah anyway that's i, I think we should do a whole podcast episode uh. on star trek movie previews we can go through and review all of them i think that'd be fun that would be fun yeah uh any other major points about star trek 3 nah. i think it's about time we they had they had legit um um data tapes in this one the one yeah, that Val they Chris flop had in. she flops it in all like gently and it sort of like falls yeah, it's in not there. it's not a wooden a colored wooden block right, or plastic yeah. hunk or whatever it is uh i like in the TOS. fact that uh, there are a lot of and we we you know we didn't get to all of them but there are a lot of little things in this movie that mccoy make is suffering feel... mccoy is suffering from exhaustion so they pump him full of tranquilizers i thought that was gonna yeah uh Anyways, they maybe, but, but maybe there's a lot standard of practice uh, there's a lot of things they do in this movie that make it feel lived in and one of those is uh the implication that mccoy is a regular at that bar at hmm. that goofy hmm. bar because the waitress oh, yeah. knows him and she's like do you, do you want your usual poison mm. and then of course it has the funny funny joke that he has um Interestingly, we didn't touch base at all on the. We didn't touch on at all on uh, uh, McCoy having Spock's brain, <laughs> Spock's soul oh, yeah. inside of him, yeah, and going yeah. going crazy and goofy. We referenced some of the result of that. Um, probably not too much to discuss about that, other than yeah, interesting concept, probably yeah. passe in sci-fi sci now, but. Uh, Back then, the idea of uh, you know two minds being shared in one head, you have that. Scanning. And then you have the Steve Martin movie, time. The Man with Two Brains. Mm -hmm. The Man with Two Brains. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait. That's not what it's called, is it? Yeah, The Man with Two Brains. With Lily Tomlin? Yeah, isn't it The Man with Two Brains? Is that what it's called? I think it's The Man with Two Brains. 
I'm gonna have to look that up. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't think you're lying. Well, while you look that up, I will, uh, I will say all the closing down of the show. No, it's stuff. all of me. Yeah, the man with two brains. <laughs> look up the man with two brains. Well, okay, the one I was thinking of with Lily Tomlin is all of me. Yeah. All of me. Subtitle, The Man with Two Brains. Well, there is a movie called The Man with Two Brains, yeah. but that's with Kathleen Turner. Yeah, Kathleen Turner. <laughs> okay, you're pulling, Steve a, Martin. you're pulling a me from earlier, uh, <laughs> like last week or this week, or I don't remember which week. All right. <laughs> Whatever week it is in your neck of the woods, uh, we hope you have <laughs> derived some small amount of enjoyment out of this. Uh, Maybe a little bit. Super Zero. duper. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Fun, fun episode. Oh, that's Zero. intense, too. Zero. They have a lot of security on this. They mm-hmm. spent a good uh, three and a half, four minutes entering in security codes. Yeah, while, they while did. While the music got higher and higher pitched, just marching up the octaves. Um, yes. Uh, so next week, uh, or sometimes maybe even sooner than that, you'll be hearing our coverage, our embriefed coverage of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Embriefing. episodes two and three, and then back to our embiggened coverage of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, episode four Biggins. and beyond. Uh, so we look forward to that. Um, in the meantime, of course, you can find us on social media everywhere at It's Got Star Trek, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Blue Sky Social, Mastodon, YouTube, Facebook. I think those are the main ones. <laughs> We got them all out there. Kirk, Kirk's destruct sequence code was sequence w- or su- just Kirk said destruct sequence one code one one a. Then yeah. Scott said sequence two yeah. code one one a two b. Yeah. So they so Scott's was kind of like Kirk's except with a two b added because Kirk yeah. said and one, then Chekhov's code is, one one a Chekhov's and then he said a, code one one a two b. Yeah. Now read Chekhov's. Um, destruct sequence three code one b two b three. It's totally yeah. different. I mean, it's not totally different. It's got the same flavor. It's, it's got, got the same flavor, but my it's point got is, threes in it because he's Kirk, the third in command. But I Kirk, guess. Kirk specifically second, says, second in com- first in command. Kirk command, specifically command. says code one one a, and then Scott says code one one a to b, and then Chekhov says or not to be code one b to b three. Yes, you said that. Now say the third one, assuming that I knew what the third one was, and I did. With the Chekhov's code. You were like, now say Chekhov's. And I was like... I have confidence in you and bo- as both a scholar of Star Trek and as a podcasting partner. And, ob- and an obsessive. With that too. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, you know, it's got Star Trek.com, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, like our show, review our show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And <laughs> we, will, we, will, we will talk to you. We'll talk to you again real soon. Sometimes when do I get paid off? I don't know. All right. Bye-bye. self-destruct in 20 seconds. This is your last chance to push the cancellation button. Cancellation button? Hurry! Space Where is it? Where is it? It's gotta be here. Out of order! Fuck! Even in the future, nothing works! This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. Counting down. 10. 9. Eight, six. Six? What happened to seven? Just kidding. Oh.